Welcome to this screencast on configuring the public Facebook source. This source provides access to the streams of public Facebook status updates, which include text updates, links, photos and videos. I'll select the Data Sources tab. Data sources and augmentations are licensed under a range of pricing models. Some sources charge, whilst others are free. For example, Dailymotion uses a per item model, charging for a fixed fee of $4 for a block of 1,000 items. Let's view free sources. Here we can see free augmentations and data sources. We can see that some are already activated, for instance, the interaction augmentation and Facebook Public needs to be activated. Although the Facebook source is free, you are still required to sign a license agreement. Let's complete the form. I'll enter my contact name and a URL. 20 words are required in the description field. I will add this account is required for training purposes. And as I still need 13 more words, I'm going to just copy that and paste it. Until we reach our 20 words. I'll scroll down to see the rest of the form. I'll select a category and a company size. A signature is also required. And we need to agree to the terms and conditions. Click on continue. And finally, click on agree. If I go back to my list of free sources, we can see that Facebook Public is now active. To view additional information about a data source, click on the source's name. A description of the source is described at the top of the page, followed by a use case example, target fields, a sample filter, and an example interaction. For more examples, click on Understanding the Output Data link at the top of the page. This redirects to the DataCiv documentation pages. I'll select Facebook. Attributes in the output data may differ from targets selected for filtering. For example, the created at field and the likes count are visible in the output but are not available as targets, whereas application, type, message and source are available as targets and displayed in the output. Let's have a quick look at the Facebook targets page. This displays more information about targets I can use in filters. Click on a target to display usage information. The Facebook.hashtags target uses the equals operator for filtering one hashtag mention and uses the in operator when several hashtags are included in the argument. Let's return to the dashboard and select streams to view a filter I created earlier. I'll edit the filter to display the condition. The target is Facebook.message, the operator is contains, and the argument is coffee. Although licensing is free for the Facebook source, a data processing unit charge is applied. It will cost 0.1 data processing units to run this filter. Further down the page, we can see a breakdown of DPU costs. My filter is very simple, with only one condition. A complex filter would cost more. I will click on Live Preview. And Play to see interactions that match the filter condition.
We have some matches. Let's open an interaction and view output from our filtered source. On the left, I can see Facebook output attributes and on the right, the text and links that will be displayed in the Facebook post. I can see coffee and I can also see it in the output over here. Author information, including full name, profile photo and Facebook user ID, has been removed in accordance with Facebook's platform policies on data collection and usage. The interaction also includes a photo. I can see the link in the output. Let's compare the link with the actual post. If I right click on it and go to the actual web page, this is how it would look in the Facebook post. Thanks for watching this screencast. Look out for more screencasts in the Configuring Data Sources series.